Today's subscribers expect personalized experiences tailored to their interests. From knowing their name and location to remembering their purchase history, data is critical in tailoring a customer's experience with your brand. In this video, we'll explore how subscriber data is stored, retained, and segmented in Marketing Cloud to help you create great customer experiences. Let's start with how subscriber data is stored and retained in Marketing Cloud. Imagine a portion of Marketing Cloud as a vast digital warehouse where we keep all our customer information. This data includes email addresses, names, preferences, and more. It might come from a lot of different places, like a form on your website, point of sale systems, or social media, but you can have it all right at your fingertips in Marketing Cloud. When that data is brought into Marketing Cloud, it's stored in a data extension, or DE for short. A DE is basically a table that contains your data. It has column headers called fields and rows of data. Data extensions can stand alone or you can relate them to one another. Let's create a data extension to store our subscriber data. First, log into Marketing Cloud and hover over Audience Builder to see the drop-down menu. From there, click Contact Builder. Once it loads, click on the Data Extension tab at the very top, and from there, click the Create button in the top right. For our example, we will stick with Create from New. But as you can see, you can also use the structure of an existing data extension or template to save time for use cases that are repeated on a frequent basis. When it comes to managing a Marketing Cloud account, governance is very important. It will pay dividends in terms of organization and reporting. Naming conventions are a good example of this. For instance, if you have several data extensions or emails that start with the word newsletter, that makes it easy to aggregate send data for all of your newsletter sends. As such, here, give your data extension an accurate name and description to help you and other Marketing Cloud users identify and even report on it later on. If you have a specific folder in mind for organizing your data extensions, you can store it there. For example, here we have a folder for campaigns which also contains different subfolders for specific campaigns. If you intend to send emails to subscribers in this data extension, then make sure that the Is Sendable box is checked. And if you wish to use this data extension for test sends, check Is Testable, then click Next to move on to the next step. Here is where you configure the retention settings for your data. Remember, Marketing Cloud is designed for marketing, not long-term data storage. Accumulating too many unused data extensions or individual records will not only slow you down from an organizational point of view, but it will also slow your account down from a performance perspective. Retention settings help safeguard you against this by deleting old, irrelevant data according to your set retention periods. It's worth noting that deleting a record from a data extension will not delete the associated tracking data. To delete such subscriber-level data, you would need to follow the contact deletion process. For now, let's click Next. Now, it's time to define the structure of your data extension. Here's where you configure the columns in your data extension. You will need to define the field names, data types, and field lengths, as well as the primary key and which fields are required. The configuration of each data extension will vary based on the type of data that you plan to store within it. Every field needs a name. Keep field names short and descriptive. Field names represent the column headers in your data extension. In this example, that means we'll have a column in our DE for contact key, email address, first name, and last name. The amount of data in your account, including the number of fields in your DE, contributes directly to the performance of your account. For data extensions, we generally recommend 50 fields or fewer to avoid processing delays. As an example, SQL queries and contact deletion are two processes that might be delayed by the volume of data in your account. We recommend that you establish a consistent naming convention for your field names across data extensions. This helps maintain uniformity in your data model and makes it easier to work with data extensions collectively. Choose the appropriate data type based on the type of data that will be stored in the field. For example, if you're storing email addresses in the DE, select Email Address as the data type for that field. Aim to keep text fields to fewer than 100 characters. A primary key is a unique identifier that is assigned to each record, row, 
in a data extension. The primary key ensures that there are no blank values or duplicate records corresponding to that field, like for contact key in this case. If you select required for a field in your data extension, it means that this field can't contain null or, in other words, empty values. For example, let's say that you have a first name field in your data extension, but it's not required for customers to share their first name with you. In that case, you should ensure that the required box remains unchecked in order to ensure that records containing blank values for the first name field are included within the DE. And if you plan to personalize your email with the first name of the customer, we recommend you enter a default value like valued customer to avoid a blank space being added to the email in this case. Now, define the send relationship. Associate a field your DE with the subscriber key. This is a crucial step. Remember that you will almost always use the same subscriber relationship for all sendable data extensions. If the send relationship isn't set up correctly, you may end up with duplicate contacts in the account, causing a host of problems. So take special care here. If you have a unique identifier that's not an email address, assign it as the subscriber key before importing data. If you use Marketing Cloud Connect to import reports from Sales or Service Cloud, always be sure to include the 18-digit contact ID or lead ID for the subscriber key in data sets or reports. Once you've configured your data extension, click Complete. Congratulations, you've successfully created a data extension. You can create as many data extensions as you need to segment your subscribers and target your audience with relevant content. Now, let's see how to populate your data extension with subscriber data. This is where you store all the valuable information about your subscribers to help you give them the personalized experiences they want. There are many ways to add data to DE. In this demo, we'll walk you through how to use Contact Builder for a one-time import into a data extension. This is especially useful when you need to bring in data from an external source for a specific campaign or event. Here, we'll select an existing data extension, configure the mapping for the import, and actually import the records. In Contact Builder, click Data Extensions. Then, find and click on the data extension that we created previously. Now, click on Import. Next, select Import into Data Extension and click OK. Here, you can use a file or an existing data extension as the source. Depending on the size of the file, it can either be uploaded directly from your computer or from the Marketing Cloud FTP. After you choose the reference file, you can also define the delimiter and date format. Additionally, you must select the import type. For example, if you select Add and Update from the dropdown, this will update existing records in the data extension where the values between the file and the data extension differ, or add new records if they don't already exist in the data extension. To update records, a primary key is required. As you can see, you also have additional import options to choose from. For clarification on these options, we recommend that you refer to our import documentation. After you have configured the settings, click Next. Here you'll need to map the fields in your file to the corresponding fields in your data extension. If the order of the columns or header names in your file correspond with the order of the columns or header names in your D, then you can either choose to map by ordinal or header row. Otherwise, choose Map Manually to manually configure the mapping. After you have configured the mapping, click Next. Lastly, simply review your import to make sure that everything looks correct and enter your email address to receive a notification when the import completes. When you're ready, click Finish. That's it. You've successfully completed a one-time import into your data extension using Contact Builder. Subscriber data should be added to your data extension shortly. The time it takes will vary depending on the size of the import. You will receive an email once it completes, so keep an eye on your inbox. Remember, best practices for data uploads include using a Delta data process to upload new and updated records regularly. This helps you keep your data up to date without overwriting existing information. Great, now that you know how to create a data extension and import data into it, let's discuss segmentation. Personalization is key to boosting engagement. 
Not every message you send will be relevant to every subscriber, which is why segmentation is important. Segmentation helps you send the right messages to the right subscribers through the right channel. In this demo, we'll walk you through how to use the drag and drop filters to place a subgroup or segment of customers from one data extension into a new filtered data extension based on specific attributes found within the source data extension. It's also possible to use data from two or more data extensions as the source of a filtered data extension. However, this is not something we will cover in this demo. You would need to use SQL or set up data relationships for this instead. Please note that there are some differences between Contact Builder and Email Studio. To segment a data extension, you will need to navigate to Email Studio instead of Contact Builder. After clicking on Email Studio, hover over the Subscribers tab at the top and select Data Extensions. There are many ways to start the process of creating a filtered data extension. You can either click the Create button, click Filtered Data Extension, and then select which data extension to use as the source. Or you can navigate directly to the source data extension and use the filter icon. Simply click the filter icon from the folder view or while inside the data extension itself. The same applies to creating random data extensions, which we shall discuss shortly. Use filters to narrow down your audience according to your use case. Define your filter criteria by selecting the field you want to filter on and applying conditions like equals, contains, or greater than. For example, interest equal sign camping. Use and or logic based on your use case. For example, interest equal sign camping and hiking will return a different result than interest equal sign camping or hiking. And or logic also helps if you have values represented in different ways in your data extension. It's best practice to normalize your data before it enters Marketing Cloud. But in case this hasn't been done, use AND OR logic to capture both. For example, language equal sign, English or N. To ensure your filter logic is correct, read the filter text at the bottom. As per our filter, it reads, interest is equal to camping or hiking and language is equal to EN or English. Once you're ready, click Save and Build. From there, enter an accurate name and description and select your folder. Finally, wait for your results to process. Great, our filters worked. Don't worry if you don't get the results you're expecting, you can click Edit to try again. You should make sure that you entered the values and configured the logic correctly. Finally, let's segment our data through random splits. Adding filters is vital to create targeted segments for your campaigns. However, sometimes you need to randomize your audience for testing purposes. For example, imagine you want to gauge the response to a new product across your customer base so that you can decide whether to move forward with the product and which demographics to focus on. In that case, it wouldn't make sense to test with your most loyal customer segment, as this would likely skew the results. Instead, you can use a random split to get the insights you need by only testing with a smaller random segment of your customer base, the results of which will help you decide your future strategy. This demo focuses on random data extensions in Email Studio. However, it's also possible to randomly segment a data extension in Journey Builder. Click the split icon to get started. After that, click Add Data Extension to create a split. From there, simply specify the percentage of the split for each data extension, and Marketing Cloud will randomly assign subscribers accordingly. For our example, we will split the entire source audience into two segments of 50%. However, you can create up to 12 random extensions if you need, after you've confirmed the percentages and set the data extension name and location. Click Save and Build, then click OK. To recap, we've learned how data is stored and retained in Marketing Cloud, created a data extension, filtered it, and segmented data through random splits. These skills are fundamental for targeted and effective marketing campaigns. Thanks for watching. For more information and detailed guides, check out help.salesforce.com or visit us on the trail at trailhead.salesforce.com.